Hey guys, hope you're all having a fantastic day out there and thank you for joining me in today's awesome lesson video. So today we're gonna to be taking a look at Michelangelo Badio's speed picking technique and how I've kind of um, come around to emulate it on my own with my own style, and my own flavor to it. If you're looking for like 100% you know, accurate breakdown of what Michael's doing and like the exact hand positioning and everything, then you're definitely looking at the wrong video. <laughs> Um, you should go to Michelangelo Badio's website and purchase his Speed Kills uh, lesson package. Uh, that's going to be the route you're going to want to take for that. But if you just want to, you know, see if you can emulate that sound or that style that he has with those speed runs and, you know, put your own flavor into it like I have, then this is the video for you. So keep watching. Okay, so before we get into anything, uh, a few things we need to talk about. One, you should be playing with a metronome because that's like the most important part of all of this. Uh, number two, you should have a basic understanding of the seven positions of your major scale and where they land on the fretboard. And uh, number three, you should be comfortable with alternate and economy picking. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the picking. So to get this sound for me, like I said, I use a lot of economy and alternate picking. So sometimes I might just be doing straight alternate. And I, I wanna remind you guys that primarily the picking is coming from the wrist. There's very little arm movement. I'm not doing this. I'm relaxing the arm on the guitar very lightly. I'm just kind of letting my wrist do the work. See, I'm not picking hard. You want nice and light control movement. So anyways, this alternate picking. And what happens here is I'm kind of accenting that first picking. So it might seem a little faster doing the... What we're going to be doing here is we're going to be going either backwards in sets of two strings, walking up, just up that major scale. So uh, I think, right, and of course you can go further up with that. Sorry. A little cleaner on that one. <laughs> Still sloppy, we get the idea. Now, if he's not going backwards, uh, sometimes he's going forwards. And sometimes he'll repeat the note a couple times, or maybe he'll go back a string. It's like kind of like pedaling back, and that looks kind of like this. So uh, let's say we take D minor and I go. All right, so if we're doing this, it's just. So really, it's just like if you're playing a just regular scale shape, right? Let's say you're not even changing shape. Repeat the last string you play. Right, so you get the idea on that one. So you see they're going backwards sometimes uh, from this area. All right, a little sloppy, but you get the idea. Uh, that or just doing them two strings back and forth. That's that's how I feel like he does these little runs or these little licks. Um, that's you know my experience, kind of working with some of his songs and uh, you know just messing around and seeing what I could what I could do to sound more like that. You know, because I've always admired Michael's playing. You know, I feel like he's one of the fastest, one of the cleanest, you know, speed pickers out there, and he's very melodic, uh, especially like hands without shadows or no boundaries and all the good classics. But uh, yeah, so hopefully this gives you a different idea, right? So if you have the metronome on, and let's say I put the metronome on, just using an app here, nothing fancy. You can work this as slow as you want or as fast as you want. I have this set at 104 beats per minute. So you could be like. So 
So sometimes Michael also does these little uh, chromatic things, or maybe he's either playing like a bluesy kind of thing. Right, or maybe he's playing part of a scale. And then he just kind of stops there, right? Um, that's something you could do as well, but if you're not comfortable going that fast, you could just obviously play your scale slow. up and down, getting used to that comfortable picking. So again, the idea is to play as relaxed as possible, as clean as possible, and really get comfortable with that economy and alternate picking balance. Don't play too hard, don't play too soft, just kind of find the right dynamic. So even if you just played one string, right, and you're just kind of alternate picking, it's very light. That is as soft and as relaxed as I can play. That's very light. I'm not using any arm, no tension. It's totally right. So again, this, my left hand is very relaxed too. The last thing you want is to be gripping the fretboard to death, right? You want to be relaxed, let your fingers just kind of bounce. There's no hand work. I'm not using my hand at all. It's really just the fingertips bouncing. That's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I did. And be sure to let me know again what you guys think of the new camera angle for these lesson videos. I'm not sure if it's going to work out. We'll see. Um, but yeah, so hopefully this helped you out. Just remember, be as relaxed as possible. Uh, perfect your you know scale shapes as relaxed as possible in your right and left hand. Right. Make sure you're in sync so you're playing with a metronome. Uh, use economy of motion. Right. So that means economy picking and alternate picking together because why not have the best of both? Um, again, I'm not saying this is what Michael does for sure. I, I don't know exactly 100% what Michael does fully. I know he holds his hand a little bit differently and has a little bit of different technique than what I'm probably saying. But again, I'm not Michelangelo. Uh, you can go to his website if you want the official technique. All right, guys, thank you again for joining me, and I will catch you next time. Rock on.